Hello. Hello, everybody. <sighs> I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. <laughs> That's kind of like saying, do you like my dinner? <laughs> no. <wait. laughs> <laughs> right, right. How's your baby? How many of you are dog people? Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> I don't trust people who don't like dogs. Okay. Well, um, our ne for our next adventure, <sighs> we're going to go into the world of faith. Um, my experience over the last 20 years, 20 some years, and I mentioned this yesterday, but we're going to do a nosedive now, a deep dive, into what is faith and what do you have faith in, but we're going to start with what you don't have faith in. <laughs> because I have discovered that it's much easier for you to begin with telling yourself and identifying what you know for sure you don't have faith in than what you know you do have faith in. And faith is one of the major holy words. One of the major holy words. And the reason why we're going to, uh, and next to faith comes the word trust now. And I'll be there in a second. Um, but, I want to but I want to put this against the tapestry of our lives. There are so many extraordinary phenomena that we are experiencing that people have never experienced before. The number, the rise in mental and emotional illness is uh, off the charts. The, the, ex the, the number of um, uh, drugs, medication, the people are on medication. And <coughs> when I began as a medical intuitive, um, not exactly yesterday, but in, in the early, in the mid-1980s. I mean, I've been around a while. And I need to kind of take you back there to show you, to, to just walk you through a little bit here. When I started, I, d I, I was dropped into something that I didn't know existed. And number two... I had no interest in healing, health, or helping anybody out. So, I mean, I, I really was kind of drafted to, s my ideal life was reclusive, to be a fiction author. I have no talent for it. And I had a passionate, honest to God, I tell it all the time, I have a passionate, desire to do something of no talent for and no desire to do something of a genius for. So there you go. And, but I had a blank slate. And, and what I've learned is that's your soul's path is a blank slate. So just pay attention to that. Your soul's path is a blank slate. And the good news about that is you won't interfere with everything that happens. So that's the good news about that. And you are wide open. You, you can't anticipate anything because you have no idea what you're doing. So that's part of the joy of it too. But here's the other part. Because I had no idea about anything in healing, in medical intuition, whoever heard of a medical intuitive, I, I made assumptions 
all of which proved to be false as the time went by. One of them was that negativity caused illness. That's nonsense, so we'll get to that. Oh, just check it off your list. But I, I um, also operated from the naive point of view that people just had faith. But they simply had, well, of course they had faith. Because of the kind of background that I came from, I just assumed faith was just like a given, just an automatic life principle. So wasn't I surprised? So the years go by, and I start observing why people are sick and why they don't heal. And one of the consistent patterns that I notice is that, you know, when I, in the beginning, I thought that illness, your first, second, and first chakras are connected to base reasons for you losing power. Base. They're connected to your stress in the outside world. They're connected to power struggles with people. You hemorrhage, here's you hemorrhaging. You hemorrhage. And what I would, if I were to put this in the language of faith, this is the area that you lose power because you have absolutely no faith. No faith in yourself. No faith in your life path. No faith in anything. Now this is a big deal. In my early years, I would never, ever, ever have languaged it like this. Never. Because I didn't have this lens. Now it's the only way I would language it. Now I get it because I'm coming from up here. But back then when I started, it was, I, I put it in much more basic terms, like you have a power struggle with your family. You have a power struggle with another person. You have issues around finances. You're losing power, and when you, when, you, when you have issues around finances, you're gonna weaken your lower back, and you will. When you have issues, have we hit a knife? <laughs> <laughs> when we, <laughs> oh my. When we have issues around <coughs> responsibility, and I mean in the extreme, you're gonna knock out the pancreas. Because the pancreas is the organ that takes the hit on issues of responsibility. And it'll take the rest of the body with it because what's in one is in the whole. Everything goes for the ride. But the part of your body that gets hit first when somebody thinks, I'm responsible for everything, don't you understand it's me or nothing, and is driven, operative word, driven by that, or somebody who doesn't want responsibility for anything. So I'm talking about extremes. Um, you're, the organ that takes the hit is the pancreas. Okay, the organ center that takes the hit for power struggles. This is important where you, you think, I've got to win. I've got to get the last word in at all costs. I've got to win is the colon area. Okay, this area. And this is where we, we put our weapons. This is our fight or flight. Okay, this is our animal instinct is here. This is where when, when you develop a real sensitivity for reading people, when you're really, really, really good at this, and you sense that I'm, you can be talking to somebody, and you eye-to-eye -eye contact, but, you, but your perceptual sense, your, your, the eyes of your soul, 
are now, that's where your clarity is. Never mind what you see. Never mind what you hear. You turn on your, the eyes of your soul. And they instantly tell you where the person's power is. And if that person's power drops to here, you're now dealing with someone who's coming from their animal nature. Their animal nature. And what that means is just like we were speaking before lunch. It means that if you try to reason with them, if you try to make sense, if you try to, to say, look, can we just discuss this? They will say the hell with you. Because discussion is off the table. Violence. Okay? It, it, it's off the table. This, and it's, this is really, imp really get this, because when you try to initiate holy language, be a problem solver, be a mediator, to bring a higher vision, vision is a holy word, to bring a higher vision. And I hear people say all the time now, I'm looking for my highest potential. That phrase is holy language. They're looking f you're looking for your holy potential. Your holy potential. What can I bring that's holy to this earth? You, you, you're looking for something that requires that your being is in present time. You can't be all over the place. And you can't be somebody whose soul is controlled by another person because that other person looks at you and does this. That that can knock you out? That that can command you? Because someone does and you snap out and walk away? It, it says what an amateur you are that you're, you're completely eaten alive because you don't get your way. Okay, you're still in training. You're still in training. You, 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 you have to be able to take command of your soul. This is what this time is now. This is a time where we are undergoing this phenomenal transformation where the order is take command of your soul. Take command. That's what we're learning. Okay. And so, in this first world, this is where we learn how easily we lose power with everything. Everything. Absolutely everything. And to accommodate that, in the outside world, we're losing faith in every structure that represents faith. Okay? We're losing faith in absolutely everything that represented faith, including all of our governments, including every single structure. But I, I, what happened to my, oh, here. But I'm going to remind you again and again and again, while I use examples that come from the earth, if you interpret things on the earth, you'll lose your power. Because you won't understand anything. The events happening on the earth are happening because those, those organizations are meant to be drained now. You get that. Come up to the penthouse with me. And you have to understand that all of these organizations from the way that countries are organized to governments, to churches, to synagogues, every single one of these organizations is meant to become disempowered as we become empowered in creating a very different 
resonance with having faith in ourself. Okay, as we become empowered in, ter in terms of learning, we, in order to construct a global theology, we can't have this same structure. It's as simple as that. We cannot have the same structure as we create a global theology in which we recognize everybody on the planet as being part of a collective human soul. Yes, go ahead. Well, do you think this is going to take, like, from Jesus now, because thousands of years, <clears throat> is this going to take another? Well, we're not going to pull it off by Christmas. Well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how things are going quickly. Yeah. Like, they should be. They, it's first. going, you know what? It's going very, you know, that we, every one of us, is in our own lives are living all the obstacles. And for every one of, every one of the obstacles, in our, if we look at all the challenges that we have in our own life, they're the micro challenges of what we're facing at the macro. So if you look at your life and your body as a macro, a micro earth, Look at yourself as a micro-earth and that everybody on your earth represents what it is to get the nations to cooperate, what it is to balance the ecology, what it is to balance the environment. And for every accomplishment you make on your earth, it is your contribution to the whole. The way we will balance the whole is as you balance the one, it is what is in one is in the whole. For every one of us as a molecule that balances, that is how we will balance, not through legislation, not through all of this, we are the legislative body. We are, all life breathes together. As we do this, the environment rises up within us and around us, and we have healed the whole. We are the whole. And I'm, so you can legislate to the cows come home, but if we don't change, that will never change. We are the whole, okay? Which is why so long as we are polluted, we will breathe pollution. So long as we are toxic, we will live and have toxicity. It is us. And when that critical balance comes, that we reach 50.00001%, we will have made it to the majority and boom, you know, it's, it's exactly, you don't have to believe me, but I'm right. <laughs> I know I'm right. I know it in my soul. I know it in my soul. I know it in my soul. Because I know the laws. And, and, and heaven is consistent. Heaven is consistent. Look in your own life. Heaven is consistent. Look in your own life that all the good things that have happened to you, you've never had a hand in. Mm -hmm. Ever. All the things that have been screwed up, you've had a hand in. And that ha will always be consistent. Because know, know yourself. Because everything you've had a hand in, you've screwed up because of fear because of expectations, because of thinking you were doing the right thing. You've never done the right thing when you've had a hand in it because it's come from this. Where did my columns go? It's become from, it's gone, it's come from the first column because you've come from the worst part of you, which is why heaven pulls the rug out from under you and then the best thing happens. And it's a matter of faith. It's always a matter of faith. It's a matter of how you respond and say, 
And then heaven always pulls out the card. And if you, if you just leave it to heaven and think, if I'm still alive, you've got a plan for me, so do something. Do something. Take your hands off the wheel and you stop planning what you know nothing about, which is your own life. Which is your own life. And you act with all the elements in your life it says, if I'm here, then you are exactly the cherubs I'm supposed to teach. You, God gave me to teach in these days. You are exactly who I'm supposed to be with. So I look at every one of you and I memorize you. Because you made this journey to be with me. And heaven directed that. And it fills my heart. And if it, it overwhelms me to think how much work it took for heaven to arrange all that. That's how I see this. That's how I see this. And all the busy work it took for heaven to get all that together. And what must be going on in your lives that you need to be here? And so I say this prayer, what, what can I do? What can I do? What do I need to say? I need to attend to. <laughs> Because that's how I see it. If you think it's a casual thing for me, it is not. This is a mystical experience for me. And a mystery. Because other people could be here, but they're not. But they're not. They couldn't get in, but you did. But you did. So you look at your lives and you think, I could have been here, but I'm here. And no matter how your days are, when no matter where you are, standing in line at a grocery store, you say to yourself, I could be standing next to someone else, but it's this person. Why is that? No matter what. And if you think your life is organized in any less micro detail, you are mistaken. It is you who are mistaken. Because Teresa said, you look for God in the small details, and that's where you find every single thing. Every single thing. You get yourself out of orbit when you start thinking, I need big proof that I'm great. I need a big thing to show me that I am incredible. And that's when you put your head in a toilet <laughs> for seven minutes <laughs> until you get your act together. Until you get your act together. And then you come back and you get yourself where you belong. Where you belong. Yeah, honey. Could I ask a question about your saying that people are... Well, uh, uh, not till you get a mic. <laughs> um, you mentioned about people being in certain places, like we're the ones who are here with you. I get a lot of physical signs in my life. Things come into my life and I know they mean something will happen. What I've been wondering lately is every th people, for example, when I was betrayed very badly, I saw funerals every day for 10 days, big cortèges, um, hearses, and then when it happened again, it's my ex-husband, nine months later, that it started happening again, so I knew what was coming. And funerals? Was you saw funerals again? Yes, I saw funeral after funeral. And so I knew what was coming, and it happened. And I get similar things. What I, what I can't understand is, how do all these people died at a certain time to give me a sign? Uh, presumably Thoughtful. I, presumably I... <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> they were going to die anyway. But presumably I'm also in other people's lives giving them signs. And That's I was wondering right. what you thought about... Um, so I've been puzzling lately over how it all how it's all directed so when you mentioned it's heaven, isn't it amazing heaven directing it i know it just it it blows me away and i don't get it so you so Jung would yeah question. well yeah well that is my answer yeah. um <laughs> because i can't do it and that's why there's a god mm -hmm. because it is so astonishing isn't it astonishing jung called it synchronicity i mean i look at it I, I remember, you know, I studied astrology, but I'm no astrologer. But it's my favorite. If I could do anything else, if I couldn't be an astrophysicist, because I like to say it, 
I would be an astrologer because I love the science. Um, but I remember that, you know, Pluto is the planet of great transformation and death and etc. The day Pluto came around and, and uh, hit my son, the very day my brother died. And I remember someone, um, this astrologer friend saying to me, you know, you could lose someone, it's usually a male. Interesting. Bingo, my brother died the day. Now, that wasn't true for my mother's chart and she lost her son. And it what? And did my brother's chart say that you'll die that day? Where was Pluto in his chart? But I have never stopped thinking about that question that you just asked. It's been playing on my right. mind. Right. Yeah, well, it plays on my mind, too. Get out of my mind. And, <laughs> and, and it plays on my mind. Like, how does that tapestry fit together? How does it fit together? But, but one of the things I have speculated about, mind you, speculated. So this is an answer in speculation progress. Is that perhaps answers Perhaps events are a bit like <laughs> toilet water, cologne, and perfume. In that the way they fit together synchronis synchronistically is that so, uh, an event like a death was supposed to affect me like perfume. It hit hard. But that same death affected someone else like cologne. And someone else like toilet water. And somehow the, uh, the configurations were like that. I, and here's something else that is just somehow and this is really hard, to, this is really going to push. Each of these columns of our consciousness has a different watch. Okay? In this column, we wear this watch where events go hour by hour, day by day. But when we step into the middle column, time becomes relative. So let me give you an example. It may take you 20 minutes to forgive someone that it takes me 20 years to forgive. We're on our own in the second column. And this is a big deal to get, everybody. In the third column, there is no time at all. Because now we're in the cosmic universe. Okay, so now I'm going to draw this because it's really, re really, this is a simple thing, but not really. Okay. This is horizontal or chronos time, and this is vertical or holy time. Now, I wondered for the longest time, how is it healing happens as, at an instant? How is it that certain things happen, in, like how is it that Jesus could heal, how is it some people heal instantaneously and other people take time? This is time. This is time. And these are the illnesses that we lock into time. These are the illnesses, come over here, in this column, that somebody would say are impossible to heal in, our, in, uh, in, in, the, in the world. These are the first, second, you can't possibly heal a broken spine. You can't possibly heal fourth, to fourth stage this and fifth stage that and 20th stage that and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. 
you can't brain freeze and all these other things that you can't possibly heal. But you are dealing with people who don't, who have, for example, first, second, and third chakra faith. They're dealing in the chemical world and, that's as f and they don't understand the mystical laws. And they're, they're dealing with um, horizontal time and stop me if you lose me. Okay? Now, Jesus, Buddha, the mystics, everything that I am teaching you, everything that I'm teaching you, everything, is all about me telling you how to pull up your anchors from where you're hemorrhaging, how to use your soul to become aware of where you're hemorrhaging and losing power, where you're losing power, why you're losing power, how to identify when, you've, when you are hemorrhaging your soul to what Buddha would call an illusion. You know, an illusion. If I said something like, I would never wear that red sweater. And you take it personally and think, she always says that to people. It's that time in the afternoon and she's got to find someone to smart off to. Instead of responding like that, you think, how could she say that to me? And you've attached yourself to what I've said instead of dismissing it. The difference. That attachment's an anchor. All right, that's going to cost her power. It won't cost me anything. But now she's anchored herself to me. So I go on my merry way, but now she's anchored to me, and that's going to cost her power. That power will cost her time and cell tissue. She's now going to age a little bit faster because it's costing her some of her life force. And not only will it cost her aging, it will shift the speed at which, tell me your name, Karen. Karen. It will shift the speed at which Karen can perceive truth. So I'm going to say this again. This is a great big, huge, big deal. It will shift the speed. So if I have all my energy in present time, and I'm not hemorrhaging. And Karen has attached herself to people and issues. Okay? She's operating at 50%. I'm operating at 100. Something's happening here. And we both say, I wonder what's going on. I get it instantly. It takes her twice as time, 50% longer to understand something because she has to get through her illusions, meaning this. Karen will do her calculations according to this. What will it cost me to understand this? How much will my world change if I understand this truth? What will it cost me? What anchor? Well, so let's put the truth in simple language. Let's say Karen and I are looking at a relative who's come home. And let's say that relative, we both know something's wrong. And, and we both wonder, what the heck's wrong with that person? I am not attached to the truth. I don't have any anchors that think, well, if it's this, oh my God, what if it's that? What if it's that? What if it's that? Karen's got anchors. I don't want it to be drugs. I don't want it to be this. I don't want it to be that. So I instantly get, this kid's on drugs. Instant. Got it. Karen gets, this kid's on drugs, but I don't want it to be that. So I will now go into denial and I will create, because that accurate perception is too expensive for me. It pulls up too much of the ground beneath my feet. 
it caught, where's my, here, it cost me too much horizontal earth. So I have to slow it to that speed. So instead of it happening instantly, I have to slow it down and densify it with illusions and tell myself he's really got a bad stomach. It's bad things happening at school. I'll blame it on someone else. And now it will take me five years to understand what I, her five, care in five years to understand what I got in five seconds because I don't have any anchors. Okay? Now, people heal at the same rate. Some people can't bear to heal in five seconds. So they need to load the deck and heal in five years. Because in healing in five seconds, it just changes their life too much. It's too fast for them. They can't take it. So they have to weigh down their journey. So, I'm, yes? So. Well, I, I, okay. I know. Sorry, I've got such a big voice. No, 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 honey, no, I have okay. to record it. So, uh, just in trying to personalize this, immediately I want to go to my healing room and pray to change in five, change right away. <laughs> and, and so then, uh, what, how do you pray that? I mean, if you pray, okay, I want to change immediately, that isn't necessarily going to happen. No. Because I still have to go through all this no. shit, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't have put it that way. <laughs> I have put it that way. <laughs> this is where the element of faith comes in, and it's very interesting. This is where faith and trust comes in, okay? And this is how we do this. In, and there's no jumping the system. Mm. I know, there's no cheating, and there's no jumping the system. In, in, in our first world, we have got to deal with developing the self-empowerment in our life that causes us to lose this power and behave this way. And it's that first level of faith. W faith is an element of life. It is a life force. It is a grace and it is a life force. And we... We, we, ex we use faith, we experience it in a physical form in our daily life, okay? We utilize it within ourselves, and then we, ha we use it with God, okay? Now, how do I have to figure out a way to explain this so it makes sense, so catch me if I drop this ball. Um, over the course of these decades, we have lost our capacity to have faith in God as a collective. As we've done that, we have equally lost capacity to have faith in each other. Mm -hmm. right, this has been a parallel crisis, and we've never connected that dot. We've never connected the dot. That our inability to trust the higher sacred has been reflected in our inability to trust each other. That in fact, we look upon, when we do business with each other, the assumption now is you will cheat me. That to compensate for this, we now show up at a table assuming the other person's dishonor than assuming a sense of honor. And it's actually because we have no faith in ourselves. No faith at all in ourselves. And it's actually because 
The deeper wisdom is because we've let ourselves partner with darkness. And that's the real reason. We've let ourselves partner with darkness and behave in ways in which we do not have faith in our own behavior. In our own behavior. We don't trust ourselves either. We have become faithless in ourself. Again and again and again, I have said to people during the healing process, you know what you need to do? You need to do this and this and this and this and this. And I watch their faith, face. I watch their face. And I can see them automatically beginning to bargain with themselves, saying, well, I'll do this tomorrow and I'll start this tomorrow and I'll do this tomorrow. Knowing full well that they know they're lying to themselves. And they know they're lying to themselves. And they know that they, their inner self has no trust in them whatsoever. They know that they are lying to themselves about their own word. That in fact, when they say to themselves, I will get up and I will exercise and I won't eat any more salt because it's bad for me and my blood pressure and da 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 They know full well they are lying to themselves and they will break their word to themselves. So it, th this is faith and trust here. And when you can't have faith and trust at that base level here, it is impossible to transfer faith and trust to something you can't even see when you can look at yourself in the mirror. So it's no wonder people will say to, to me, do you have any prayers that work, that actually work? <laughs> okay, I want you to stand up and stretch. I see you're, you're getting this th to the 2.30 sleep time, and that's impossible in my workshop. It's quarter to three. It's impossible. You, you can just stand up and stretch. Nobody's allowed to drift off in my workshop <laughs> because it's impossible. So you can take a five-minute break. Five. Five, and that's it. You're back here. <laughs>